Mushrooms in Japan, China, and India. There are over 10,000 known mushrooms in the world right now. So what have these fungi done to influence our past cultures? Magic mushrooms have played a role in the formation of many different cultures and religions around the world. But in order to fully understand how mushrooms play a role in cultures, we must first understand their origins. Magic mushrooms were used extensively in parts of Eurasia in ancient times and were used for psychedelic trips and hallucinations. We will turn the page and look at mushroom cultivation and use in China, Japan, and India to fully grasp the role of psychedelic mushrooms in each culture. From spirituality to medicine, there is much to be known about the world of magic mushrooms. Now that we understand that mushrooms were used extensively in different cultures, we will dive deeper into what mushrooms are, specifically magic mushrooms. There are four different categories of mushrooms. For example, mushrooms that create psilocybin or psilocin, mushrooms that produce ibotonic acid or muscimol, calviceps, and finally psilocybe and rasula, which is understudied. The mushrooms used by the cultures we are discussing are composed of the psychoactive ingredient psilocybin or psilocin. This drug could be ingested in many different ways, but the main digestive methods we will be discussing are drinking the urine of someone who's ingested a mushroom, eating the actual mushroom, or taking it with food. There are multiple other ways that one could take mushrooms, but these are just a few. This drug could be ingested in many different ways, but the main ways that the mushrooms were consumed included drinking the urine of someone who ingested a mushroom, eating the actual mushroom, taking it with food, and various other ways. Although mushrooms were ingested for mind-altering purposes, they could also be poisonous, and in fact, it's quite common for someone to get poisoned by a mushroom that they consumed. Even the most advanced mycologists sometimes have problems with identification. In China, evidence of the use of mushrooms by the Wu and shamanists were discovered and show that they could have been using mushrooms as early as 2600 BCE. The shamanists were a religious group focused on spiritual liberation that existed in ancient times. They used magic mushrooms to help them reach this point of spiritual liberation. We know this because of the oracle bones, magic healer texts, and slips left behind by the shamans. However, by the spring and autumn in the Warring States period, their status began to decline until they were officially banned by the imperial government in 1024 CE during the Song Dynasty. Wu shamanism survives in the vernacular religious sects through assuming other names and by incorporating Taoist and Buddhist deities. In addition to the evidence left behind by the shamans, the Ben Kao texts also uncover a hidden truth about magic mushrooms in ancient China and ancient Japan. The Ben Kao texts are a major part of traditional Chinese medicine and provide a comprehensive catalog of medical substances and their uses. The earliest known Ben Kao text dates back to the Han Dynasty, or the 29th century BCE. It includes the Senong Banko Jing and the Hungandi Nijing. Over the centuries, numerous Ben Kao texts were written, each building upon and expanding upon the knowledge of previous works. In these texts, we are given several different species of mushrooms that are used, the fa most famous being the Gandora mushroom, or the Japanese reishi, or lingzi. The author also includes various other mushrooms that have similar effects to the lingzi mushroom, as seen below. Although lingzi is said to have an effect of granting the user eternal life, this is certainly not the case. It also doesn't provide any hallucinogenic experiences. Despite this, the Japanese used this mushroom for its mysterious health benefits, and so did ancient China. In ancient China, the Lingzi mushroom was used medically to boost the immune system and raise spirits. Below is a mask made to resemble the Lingzi mushroom made by an unknown person. This is called the mask for a guardian spirit, which was most likely used for rituals surrounding mushrooms. 
To address the need for effective medicine, the Chinese developed growing methods for a variety of medicinal and culinary mushrooms between 600 and 1000 AD. Medically important species traditionally cultivated or collected in the wild and used in China include juicier black fungus, oyster mushroom, enoch maitake or hen of the woods, and various other ones. Some other medicinal mushrooms include poriococos, cordyceps sinensis, fomus fomentarius, gonoderma lycidium, and more. Specifically, I would like to focus on the famous laughing mushroom in both ancient Japan and China. In Japan, the origin of the discovery of the laughing mushroom starts with some woodcutters in Kyoto who went to the Kidama Mountains and got lost. They stumbled upon four or five Buddhist nuns dancing and singing. They claimed they were dancing not like humans, but that they must be goblins or demons. The Buddhist nuns then explained that they came to pick flowers for the Buddha, lost their way, and stumbled upon some mushrooms of which looked like big orange puffs. They decided it was better to pick these than starve, and realized immediately that they could not stop dancing. The woodcutters then take these mushrooms, and two, they laugh and dance with the nuns. This is why the mushroom is called miyatake, or the dancing mushroom. This odd story might not have an amazing plot, but it does show how these mushrooms made you delirious. Later, it was discovered that the miyatake mentioned in the Konjaku story was actually Waraitake, the laughing mushrooms. Another name includes Odoritake, the jumping mushroom. This story is recorded in writing in the Konjaku Monogatarishu, a book of short stories written in the 8th century, but it was mostly passed down through generations orally. Here's a picture of the original text and a translation. Long, long ago, some woodcutters from Kyoto went into the Kitama Mountains and lost their way. Not knowing which way to go, four or five of them were lamenting their condition when they had heard a group of people coming from the depths of the mountains. The woodcutters were wondering suspiciously what sort of people might be when four or five Buddhist nuns came out dancing and singing. Seeing them... The woodcutters became fearful, thinking things like, dancing, singing nuns are clearly not human beings, but must be goblins or demons. And when the nuns saw the men and started straight towards them, the woodcutters became very frightened and wondered, how is it that nuns come thus out of the very depths of the mountains, dancing and singing? The nuns then said, Our appearance dancing and singing has no doubt frightened you, but we are simply nuns who live nearby. We came to pick flowers as offerings to Buddha, but after we had all entered the hills together, we lost our way and couldn't remember how to get out. Then we came upon some mushrooms, and although we wondered whether we might be poisoned if we ate them, we were hungry and decided it was better to pick them than to starve to death. But after we had picked and roasted them, we found they were quite delicious, and thinking, aren't these fine? We ate them. But then, as we finished the mushrooms, we found we couldn't keep from dancing. Even as we were thinking, how strange, strangely enough, we, the woodcutters were no end surprised at this unusual story. Now, the woodcutters were very, very hungry, so they thought, better than dying, let's ask for some too. And they ate some of the numerous mushrooms that the nuns had picked whereupon they also were compelled to dance. In that condition, the nuns and the woodcutters laughed and danced around and round together. After a while, the intoxication seemed to wear off, and somehow they all found their separate ways home. After this, the mushrooms came to be called miyatake, dancing mushrooms. When we think about it, it's a striking story, for even though we have this kind of mushroom, people who eat it do not dance. Thus, This exceedingly strange story has been handed down. Below is a picture of a dragon on a Japanese reshi mushroom, and this shows how reshi and 
or lingzi are really, really important in Japanese culture. As another cool example of the presence of the laughing mushroom in Japan is this Japanese woodblock print of Okame laughing at the shadow of a mushroom by Yoshi Toshi in 1939. Really cool artwork. In China, these mushrooms grew in abundance. According to Hallucinogenic Plants and Chinese Herbals by Hu Lin Li, the early account of laughing mushrooms is recorded by Cheng Ha in the Qin Dynasty. In the mountains south of Yahtzee River, on tall trees, these mushrooms grow from spring through summer. They are tasty to eat, but often prove fatal. It's said that these mushrooms are mostly poisonous, those growing on the fang tree. When ingested, cause people to laugh unceasingly. The method for treating this is to use soil infusion, which cures it readily. These mushrooms poison people with laughs and delirium. This delirium can be so out of hand that people have been unable to escape it. However, there's a herbal remedy to help the user with this crazy delirium. Strong tea mixed with alum and clear water has said to cure this. These mushrooms are not considered toxic in Europe, but they are in China and Japan. In addition to the laughing and dancing mushrooms, in the search for immortality, the Taoist practitioners in China may have used the fly agnarac or Amanita muscaria. This mushroom is now theorized to be one of the essential ingredients in the mysterious substance called soma in India, which will be the last thing I overview. In India, they use this mysterious substance said to be made partly with hallucinogenic mushrooms. Soma was a mysterious drink that ancient Indians used for its spiritual and medicinal powers, and it was personified with the Vedic religion to be a god. Because the Rig Veda could only be read by the Vedists, botanists who had an interest in discovering what Soma was was never able to find out its real ingredients. The liquid was made by pressing together the ingredients between two stones and filtering it through multiple vessels, or that's the preferred or theorized way that it's made in the mystery to Soma. The contents of this mysterious drink are relatively unknown or undecided, but scientists all over the world have predicted that Amanita muscaria may be the missing ingredient. This mushroom is normally found growing on birch trees in the mountains across India, including the Himalayas and the Hindu Kush. This mushroom, which has a red puffy top and white spots, has become one of the most recognizable mushrooms in the modern world. The true story about Siddha Karnapia in the legends of the 84 Marasiras, a collection of Tibetan autobiographies. His story begins as his guru asks him to collect food for alms, but only as much as a tip of a needle could hold. Karnapia returns with a pancake on his head, balancing on the needle, looking much like the toad stew mushroom. There's a strong suggestion that these mushrooms inspired this monk to collect alms like this, and the original text is shown here. The Rig Veda, a holy text, suggests that the fight Agnarak was used in Soma. Here's an excerpt from the Rig Veda proving its connection. Soma wraps himself all around the rays of the sun. Once born, thou Soma didst fill the th sun with rays. The Soma races against the rays of the sun, vehicle beautiful to see. Celestial vehicle beautiful to see. These quote unquote flaming seeds of the sun are Atasa are flaming red-yellow, and Soma is the same dazzling color. Not only is the parallel with the sun revealed in the red and reddish-yellow cap, but the white studs suggest the sun's rays. And for Soma, the poets sometimes substitute pava, Pavamana, the yellow liquor expressed from Soma, which was illustrated in plate IV. This yellow liquor is theorized to be pea, I know it sounds like an odd way for someone to take mushrooms, but from what we know, the first user of the soma will pee out the liquid for someone else to drink. This is because something called the third filter exists, 
This filter was the human body. The pea is stronger than eating the ingredients of soma themselves, therefore inducing a heavier effect on the user. The accepted meaning of nirnish is a milk that is mingled with the juice of soma after pressing. This milk can be assumed to be piss. Soma was often used in Vedic sacrifices and spiritual endeavors. In the, I can't say it, <laughs> but this book of which I do not know how to pronounce was translated and edited by Dash in 1987. And there's a list of herbal medicine and unknown botanical identity called Somaski or the Eye of Soma. This Eye of Soma could have been the mushroom Amanita muscaria. Finally, it was said that this drug was likened to the vault of heaven. Although the plants which made up soma are not discovered for sure, there is strong evidence that soma could be made up partly of the fly agnorak mushroom. Like a thirsty stag, come here to drink. Drink soma as much as you wish. Pissing it out day by day, O oh generous one, you have assumed your most mighty force. The Rig Veda. These implements found at BMAC that Siddharthi saw shows that the use of soma in places like India were extremely common, and we even have artifacts to show that. Mushrooms play a major role in all of these cultures and have influenced a lot of the world of spirituality and enlightenment. From the mysterious world of soma to the delirious trips on laughing mushrooms, there is much to be said about the role that mushrooms have played in Asia, 